We continue to preview the 2023 college football season. Our stop today is Sioux City, Iowa, and we get to visit with Steve Ryan, who is the head football coach for the Morningside Mustangs, longtime coach there. Uh, let's just start really quickly with 2022, as uh, you all are coming off of winning three out of the last four national championships, 11-1, and one, another great season. It ended, however, in the quarterfinals. Can you tell us a little bit about last season? Yeah, it's, you know, um, I – you know, I, it was a great year. I mean, uh, we won 11 games in a row and then ended up kind of uh, losing in the quarterfinals. And, you know, there's a lot of those guys that had won three national championships in the four previous years. You know, the COVID year was there in the middle where we didn't win it. So they were all kind of coming back for that fifth year, hoping they can get another one. And uh, just didn't happen. In, injury bug got us last year. Um, could complain about it, but uh, if you reflect, reflect back, for three years, we stayed healthy to win three national championships, and that's what you got to do. And, and we just weren't able to to put it together last year, but it was a great year regardless. I think so, too. And, and watching from an outside perspective, 11-1 and one, and the way that you all performed, even through the end of the year, Coach, from this perspective, you all looked like you had a great season. And I know that there are a number of players that aren't coming back from last season and probably at the top of the list, if if not near the top of the list, Joe Dolinchek, who was the NAI National Player of the Year again, as he's expended his time. That means there's going to be someone new in that quarterback position. Talk about the competition there. Yeah, so – you know, Joe came back for his, you know, for his fifth year, hoping to see if he could do it again and had a great year, broke his index finger, his throwing hand with two games to go in the season. So wish it could have ended better for Joe. Um, but uh, Joe has Joe has moved on. And so there's going to be a lot of competition. Um, we had a, a transfer. Trent Lorna came in from California and, uh, Lennox Brown, who played receiver for us last year, moved back to quarterback, and those guys competed throughout the spring, and and they're going to come back in this spring and see what they can do. And um, there's a couple of freshmen coming in, so we'll we'll see what they can do. But it, it's going to be a competition, and hopefully, uh, hopefully, someone comes out on top, and 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 we can move forward with that. Whoever comes out on top in that will have some people around him too. And that's that's something that would have to be a benefit for anyone to fill in that spot for you. You look in the backfield right there alongside is Ryan Cole coming off a fantastic year. He led the NAI with 25 rushing touchdowns last year. And he he put the emphasis, by the way, in both student and athlete because he was a great athlete on the field, but he was also a very good student. Academic All-American Team Member of the Year. That has to be a fantastic <laughs> honor as well. Yeah, he he is just an amazing young man, Ryan Cole. And uh, last year was his, his sophomore year, um, had an, an amazing year. And really, he finished the year strong. So I felt, um, you know, his last three games were as good of a games as we've had. And we're excited about having him next year. He didn't finish the year either healthy, uh, hasn't finished either of the last two years healthy. So I think one of the things for us is, you know, maybe minimizing the number of carries as he goes through the year and and just trying to, to use his his skill set. But he's developed into he's an outstanding receiver. He's an excellent blocker, uh, uh, intelligent young man. He's just he can do it all in the field. Um, K.J. Williams backed him up last year is back again and also just a, an amazing, an amazing young man. Um, and. And so we've got a couple really good running backs back that we're, we're excited to see what they can do. Anyone who gets to be the quarterback is going to have good receivers when they play at Morningside. And, and a, a good group last year coming back, and, and I would imagine even leading the way for that group this year, Zach Norton. He was also somebody who led the NAI in his particular category, 17 catching touchdowns last year. Yeah, Zach um, – Zach had an outstanding year last year and uh, really has worked hard this this summer and the spring. Enjoyed watching what he can do. He's got great speed. Uh, he's taken the time this spring to really work on his route running uh, and a lot of the things they can do. So we're, we're going to count on Zach. Um, we have had a great runner re receivers here at Morningside. We, we still think that we have several really good receivers and it, and it starts with Zach. Coach, everything revolves around the offensive line, and, and I know that that makes a difference. Can you tell us a little bit about your O-line coming into 23? Yeah, I think we graduated a few guys in the middle. We had a lot of guys that got experience last year because we struggled a little bit with injuries last year. Um, but both of our tackles are back. Aiden Queen 
and uh, Riley Lindbergh. And um, last year was the first year for both of those guys starting. And so we're, um, we're excited about what they can do. They've grown, uh, they've developed, uh, they've played in some big games. And I think when you have a, a new quarterback, which we're going to have, I think it's critical, um, the two guys that we have at, at tackle coming back. Um, inside the middle, we've graduated. We, we think we've got really good depth on the offensive line this year. Um, there's going to be quite a bit of competition with Travis Rivera, Jack James, uh, Hayden Carver, um, Alex Hansen, who started for us early in the year before he got injured, all big body guys. So I think if there is something that will be a little bit different, um, I felt last year we were, we were playing with a smaller offensive line. Um, we're going to get back to being much bigger up front. And I, and I think it could be a real strength for us this coming year. We're speaking now with Steve Ryan from Morningside here on Midwest Sportsnet. I encourage you, please continue to enjoy the videos here. We love talking about small college sports and more throughout the Midwest and beyond, including getting to visit with uh, folks like Coach Ryan, longtime coach at Morningside, 22nd season, and uh, Coach, just the honors that have been over the years with Conference Coach of the Year, National Coach of the Year. You're even a Hall of Fame coach right now as an active coach, so that's pretty impressive in and of itself. So I says I'm old, Joey. That's like <laughs> Hall of Fame. Like, is is that guy still alive? I mean, yeah, that's just. Um, I guess you can win some games if you just coach long enough. If they just leave you out there long enough. Law of averages kicks in. Yeah, you're going <laughs> to you're going to win a couple games here or there. So that's that's happened for me. Well, you'll get a chance to then to to prove your worth because you, we talked about players that are have departed from your team and and you lost a lot on that defensive line. Tell us a little bit about how you're restocking there. Yeah, we have and um we uh we've you know one of the reasons we've had great success the last few years really has been our defensive line. Um and we lost some outstanding defensive ends. So there's going to be quite a few guys that are new. Um there's a lot of, you know, competition um, I guess I look back to 18. I think we felt the same way in 2018 that we didn't have anyone coming back and boom, you know, we end up having a great defensive line for, for four years in there to lead us. So, um, you know, uh, we're, it's going to be Colton Dreeth and Austin Jurgens and Cle Brandon Cleeton at the defensive end spot. All those guys played quite a bit last year. It's just now their time to step up and make it happen. And, and then Brady Schlager at the defensive tackle has been a starter for us a couple of years coming back. So, um, you know, it's now their time, you know, for them to step up and make plays for us. Backing them up in the linebacker position uh, among the players that come back for you, Isaac Pingle uh, was a player who got some attention last year conference-wise and was actually the national player of the week one week as well. Um, Isaac's got great speed. And um, he's, he's, he's fast, he's explosive, he can cover a lot of ground. He's an outstanding leader. Um, now he's been playing with some older linebackers that have always kind of taken that leadership role. So for Isaac, it's that stepping up in that leadership role, um, becoming active in that, in that manner. So, but we're, we've got big expectations for him. Um, Brody Nelson is coming back, played a lot for us. Uh, his brother Chase started for us. In eight, on the 18 and 19 national championship teams. His younger brother, Deegan, is coming in as a freshman. And so the Nelson brothers, I think, will figure in well and in, in playing linebacker. And and Hayden Mendel started a couple games for us early last year and, and then uh, was injured, and so he'll be back. So there's some good depth of guys coming back at linebacker with some experience, but we definitely need to stay healthy, um, especially with a younger D line up front. GPAC is such a tough conference, and I know that from a defensive perspective, you you have you see a lot of things from week to week to week, and there are some pretty solid passing quarterbacks out there as well that you all face. I mean, you've had some good quarterbacks on your team, but the league is going to send some good quarterbacks your way as well. I know you want to have good players in the secondary. Lonnie Boyd, one of those from last season, led the way for you, but also looks like you're going to get Jamal Jones back for this year. Yeah. You know, first, just talking about the GPAC, the GPAC's had a great run um, in recent history, just some of the teams putting out. And um, I think one of the reasons for the, the resurgence in the GPAC has been quarterback play. There's some outstanding quarterbacks in the conference. You know, I was fortunate to get to coach some of them, and, and that's good, but there's still some outstanding quarterbacks there. And so uh, defensive back play is going to be critical. Um, it, you know, could be a strength for us on the defense. Uh, 
Johnny Walls had a great year last year. Corners coming back. Uh, John Andreessen started for us at corners coming back. And then with that, um, Jamal Jones had missed, you know, last year with an injury. Uh, we chose to redshirt him. And, and I just think he's had an amazing spring and he looks right where he was coming off. So we feel good at corner. And then Lonnie Boyd. Lonnie, as a safety, uh, is an outstanding leader, has a great understanding of our defense, uh, does a great job communicating and um, I'm, I'm, I'm excited about his season. I'm excited about what he can do uh, really uh, because of his leadership skills, the intensity, which he plays with. Um, Lonnie and I took two trips together this spring. You know, we take a service project trip. We went down to Louisiana for a week and, and helped with Hurricane Ida recovery. And so I had a chance to work with him down here, down there. And we climbed a 14,000 foot mountain together this summer, just have had a lot of conversations with him and, really have enjoyed it. Sometimes when you're a coach, you spend so much time on the offensive side, you miss out me, you know, really getting to know some great guys on the other side of the ball. So I'm really looking forward to Lonnie's year. I appreciate you sharing that coach. That That's great to hear. And it's always nice to hear about what, what the teams are doing to be a blessing and to benefit other people. You don't get to see that all the time and what you all are doing in the off season. The off season isn't going to last much longer though, because camp is right around the corner and yeah. Then you get a week zero meeting, and you all have a nice setup, a home and away to your home and away with Benedictine. You guys are going to go to Atchison, Kansas on August 26th to take on Benedictine on the road. That should be a tough non-conference matchup. Nice little intersectional matchup there for you all. And then uh, you're on the road to start the GPAC schedule September 9th. You get the bye week there before you go into GPAC play at Hastings. And then back-to-back games at home, September 16th at Mount Marty, and the 23rd, it's going to be at Midland. Take us to the first part of your schedule. Yeah, um, I, I really don't even think past Benedictine. So, <laughs> you, you know, you go through all that other stuff, it's like, yeah, that's right. But, you know, we played Benedictine for the 2018 National Championship. It was a phenomenal game. It really was. Um, and, and we set up a home-and-home home with them to open up the season for the next two years. Um, and I think Joel Osborne's doing an amazing job down there. I think they're an outstanding team. Um, and I think it's going to be just a great ball game. Um, and so I'm really looking forward to playing those guys. I, I think our guys are looking forward to it. I'd have to believe that Benedictine as well. So I do think for the quality of the game, uh, there's some real value to getting outside of your conference and playing a big game like that. And you know, obviously we think mostly of division one, but as division one expanded the playoffs, it allowed them to have more of those games, you know, where teams left their area. So really looking forward to it. I think uh, it should be something for people that love small college it can be a great game for, for people to see. We're going to follow that up with Hastings. I think Hastings, you know, as I look at the league last year was probably the team in our, con- in our conference that improved the most. And I think they're just going to continue to do that. So, um, you know, you like to open up with some easy games, you know, when you, you, you've you got some new players in the field. We we didn't choose to do that, so hopefully our guys can hit the ground running. Well, I hope so too, Coach. And, and if, if the history from your tenure at the program, which has been the life of the program, says anything, it looks like they're going to start off well. And we look forward to following that. Coach Steve Ryan, thank you so much for taking time with us today here on the Summit to preview the 23 college football season. We are definitely going to be following the Mustangs all season long and look forward to seeing how, how your team fares in 2023. Thank you for spending time with us. Thanks, Joey, for having us.